So here we have our Hyundai Ioniq Electric. This one is a 2020 uh, 38 kilowatt hour model. And in this video, I'm just gonna talk about the cooling system on these and also the previous generation 28 kilowatt hour models. So first off, I'm gonna remove this silly engine cover they have on these cars. So we had a 28 kilowatt hour for about three years. Um, and uh, swapped it for this 38 in November last year and uh, this is the first time I've actually properly looked underneath the bonnet of this 38 kilowatt hour vehicle um, and the cooling system is almost identical the main difference between the two is the 38 kilowatt hour also has battery cooling wet battery cooling whereas the 28 kilowatt hour has uh, air cooling on the battery so it's only the motor stack which is water cooled so on this car we've got a water cooled motor stack plus a water cooled battery so I've just opened the bonnet here and I was expecting to see a second um, coolant bottle for the battery I was thinking it was going to be two different circuits keeping this motor stack cooling as one and a separate circuit for the battery but it's not the two are almost identical so I'll just quickly go over your standard sort of motor stack cooling here so you obviously you've got your coolant here you've got a radiator at the front the coolant um, comes out let's do the bottom of the bottle comes out the bottom bo bottle here goes down to a water pump down there and a three-way valve it basically goes through the motor at the bottom it also then comes in to the onboard charger which is above the motor here and then it also comes into here which is your electronic power control unit which is basically your uh, inverter and then it goes also through the chiller which is part of your um, heat pump and then uh, through the radiator obviously the coolant gets cooled and then obviously from the radiator here this is the top of the radiator so yeah it comes out of the bottom of the radiator back into the bottle and the top of the radiator it then goes through the um, onboard charger there the second unit down so that's how this car works and also how the 28 kilowatt hour models work it's absolutely identical on both systems however on the 38 we've also got battery cooling and I've just seen down there, let me just see whether that focuses there, there is a second water pump which looks very similar to the water pump which is down the front there and that doesn't exist on a 28 kilowatt hour model so we've then got a hose there, I don't know whether, let's see, can you see those two metal clamps on the hose down there just there that is the hose which goes off to the battery and on the other side of this water pump there is a hose which goes along the back of the motor stack and I can't find out where the other end of that is without um, putting the car on the ramp and taking the undercover off but I'd imagine it goes down to the valve at the bottom maybe that three-way valve is a bit different maybe it's a four-way valve um, so yeah quite clearly your battery cooling is just teed in to the uh, motor cooling system and I thought it was going to be more complicated than that. So on the 28 kilowatt hour cars you change this coolant um, at five years old and it's just standard radiator coolant um, nothing special about that I've got a video on the channel coming at some point soon on that procedure on these cars the same coolant is obviously going through the battery uh, and there is a sort of a, an issue with these on the 38s um, that customers get uh, low coolant messages up on their screen uh, it's not 100 percent clear what the issue is there's a lot of talk that the coolant crystallizes in the battery pack um, and that sort of indicates they're using the wrong coolant um, but anyway what's happening now is Hyundai are sort of doing a recall it's not a full-blown recall they're not getting the cars back in but when your car goes in for service what they're suggesting now is that the system gets flushed and put in new coolant in which um, I don't think is really going to change anything long term but anyway that's what they're doing now and um, supposedly that fixes the issue um, 
there was some talk they were going to use different coolant um, but from what I see they're not it's the same coolant so the coolant they use in these uh, is this stuff it's a special EV coolant um, they don't tell you what the specs are but they call it BSC1 it's still 50% um, antifreeze and 50% water but this is a low conductivity coolant for electric vehicles and that is what should be in there but whether um, I know it's all blue but whether that is the EV coolant or standard antifreeze from the factory I don't know but this is what they're putting in now and just because the original is blue and so is this you can't read anything into that at all that's just dye and means absolutely nothing so at some point this car will probably get done and uh, supposedly that is the fix but if that original factory coolant is this stuff already then obviously just flushing it out and refilling it isn't really going to achieve anything and the issue will soon come back but anyway I don't have any answers this car hasn't been done yet I've done a coolant change on the earlier models but obviously that didn't involve um, coolant going around a battery pack so if you can add any more to it I know a lot of you would have had this job of a coolant flush and replacement on your 38s um, do write in the comments below um, it would just be interesting to know if anyone has had this ref uh, reflush job and coolant change and how long it was until your low coolant messages come back and actually if you get that low coolant message is the coolant actually low on the bottle because if it is it means coolant is escaping I also have some serious doubts on Hyundai's technical service bulletin which shows um, Hyundai tax how to change the coolant in these cars because I've done another video on that it's not fully edited yet because it is a long one but their standard bulletin instructing workshop technicians how to do it just isn't right they rely on you just operating the water pump to flush the water out and unless the valve is removed at the bottom you're not going to get the water out all the systems and they also advise that you add water in to flush out the old coolant and all that is doing is diluting what's in there even more so unless you actually blow the water out or suck the water out you're not going to get all the tap water or coolant out by just operating the uh, water pump down there um, and that will all be coming on this other video so I do wonder whether what the Hyundai dealers are doing and just doing a flush if they're following that same sort of instruction set they're not doing a particularly thorough job in my opinion so I don't have any answers on this video I haven't changed the coolant on a 38 kilowatt hour car yet really this video was just to show you the system and to briefly explain it and uh, I was quite surprised that the 38 kilowatt hour cooling system is exactly the same as the 28 kilowatt hour cars clearly they've just got a tee off with a water pump down there sending it around the battery and maybe that's the issue maybe this motor stack cooling system um, just teeing off it like that isn't up to the job with that single little water pump down there maybe that isn't getting enough coolant around the battery I don't know I haven't taken it apart and had a look yet but anyway hope you found it useful if you have as always click the thumbs up button that really does help uh, do subscribe if you're not and I'll see you on the next video